Hello and welcome to this video. It is the first in a series of videos on the renewal of the electrification on the London to Tilbury and South End line. I'm Noel and I wanted to make this video for two reasons. Firstly, if like me you're at home due to coronavirus, I wanted to make a video that was both informative and distracting for me. Secondly, a few events have been cancelled due to the coronavirus, in particular the Rail Human Library. The Rail Human Library is an event to try and support young people into getting into rail by allowing them to meet and talk to people already in the rail industry. I wanted to make a video that discusses the type of work we do in rail and to give people a flavour of the range of jobs available by talking about one specific role. The London to Tilbury and South End line is known as C to C or Thameside. I personally know the line very well. I'm from South End on Sea and from a young age this line was a big part of my life. From trips to London, to see museums, to my first commuting to work. It means something special to be working on this project. Electrification on the line started in the late 1940s in DC and electrification continued in 6.25 kV and eventually to 25 kV. And the area we're looking at was predominantly finished electrified by 1961. Now, 60 years later, its life expired and the route will be renewed. We're renewing this to improve performance for passengers. This is the first video that explains that renewal. I'll continue with further videos as we move into construction, but currently we're in a design phase. And the first part of that design phase is collecting and collating data. We want to capture a snapshot of the route in a survey. And this video explains that first step of the survey. Before I continue, I implore you, please ignore any spelling mistakes. I started producing this video before my office went into lockdown and my raw draft files are now locked in my office. I'm left with an uneditable backup. So despite noticing some grammar and spelling mistakes, I can't edit them. So let's go into the main video. The first thing worth explaining is that it's taken quite a while to get where we are now. With most projects, there is a phase of scope writing and tendering. After this, we decided to undertake a point cloud survey of the route to capture the current infrastructure. So we, in conjunction with Network Rail, the infrastructure owner, C2C, the train operating company, and Fugro, a surveying company, undertook the survey. Planning the survey, Booking train paths, approving safety documentation all takes a while. After the survey, processing data and implementing it into design also takes time. Thus, there is a year between the start and where we are now. This is also involved different people, professions and skills. Planners, train maintenance staff, project managers, surveying engineers, safety staff, engineering staff to write specifications and plans, commercial managers, CAD managers, and docu con document controllers to name a few. The survey equipment is train mounted as you can see. The equipment is also self powered with batteries. We did a series of train runs over several days. However, on the day I filmed, we focused on the East Ham where the train depot is to Leon C section. We did numerous runs with the survey equipment on each end of the train facing different directions. It really took a full day from early in the morning to the evening. The scope of the project though is London Fenchurch Street Station to Barking and then Barking to Hornchurch and Barking to Pitsy. The route is interesting, it's a commuter route, however it also has a large freight traffic from regional ports. It's adjacent to HS1, London Underground and the Docklands Light Railway, thus has some complex interfaces and with a significant volume of freight, access is limited. There are some large regional housing projects being constructed and some of these have new rail interfaces on the route. It is a complex and challenging project to undertake. For the survey, 
it's worth noting that the train was a normal passenger train, a Bombardier 387. It was not in passenger service, as it was set up with test equipment. However, during the week, passengers would be using this train. We ran the train over a weekend. This was because there was a large enough gap in the service on the weekends to fit the survey train and the number of runs we needed. Also, on the weekend, there was a spare train that we could use. The survey is essentially capturing the infrastructure and its relationship to the tracks. The datum for us is always the tracks. Electrification, overhead line equipment needs to be positioned to the track because that's where the train is. Two questions we tend to be asked. Firstly, why do we need to do the survey? And secondly, why did we use the survey method chosen? To answer the first, we need an accurate picture of the existing railway. The line was electrified in the 1960s and records tend to be poor. There has been ad hoc modifications since then. Some have been recorded well and others not. But we need to create an accurate map of what the network looks like now. To answer the second question, why did we use this method? Well, it has a lot of advantages. Firstly, it saves boots on ballast. By mounting train equipment on the train, we took a lot of boots off ballast. We did everything on the train, rather than walking up and down the line with survey equipment. On a very long section of track like this, moving up and down with a traditional method, which is survey equipment on a trolley, takes a long period of time. It's safer to keep people on the train than have them walk the track. Using train mounted survey equipment does mean a slight loss of quality over slower mounted trolley trolleys. However, there is a huge time and safety improvement. We will though for some discrete places come back and do conventional surveys. Each survey run we undertook improved the quality, so we overlaid multiple runs to build accuracy. By mounting equipment at different ends of the train on different runs, we captured different sides of bridges and structures. Later, we also combined this with road surveys to create a complete 360 degree model of some bridges. For a long line of route survey, this methodology is becoming quite tried and tested in the UK. From the video, you can see there was fog early in the trip. As it is a laser survey, it was not impaired by fog, but later on in the afternoon, the fog cleared so we could capture good quality video and photos. The survey is part of a suite of surveys we undertook, such as ecology or looking at structure condition. The aim was to fully understand the route. We are designers and for us, the survey is useful as it contains data measurements with GPS measurements, geo-reference videos and photos. We need this information in the design phase so we can extract measurements with real world locations and then look at photos and videos and all these things linked together. I'll let you watch the rest of the survey before I go on and show how it was implemented.
Okay, so here's some of the output. All that data is combined into a model. And you can see that here. It's integrated with photos and videos as well in that model. And we can use this to create a virtual twin of the existing route. And the integration allows designers to use those point clouds and integrate them into their models. It also allows them to seamlessly integrate and move between the different mediums so you can measure from point cloud but then look at photos to understand the context and remember all the points you can see here have five millimeter accuracy so they can really be used for detailed design every point is gps referenced so if you want to say tell a someone in the construction team a real point in space we can give, give gps data from here we move on to design, which I will make into my second video, but for now I wanted to show you the output. It's worth noting the huge range of professions and skills working on this project and all rail projects. Rail has the perception of low technology, but nothing could be further from the truth. Every project I've worked on in rail uses cutting edge technology as cutting edge as any other um, industry in the UK. That's it for now. I'm making video number two on the design phase over the next couple of months, but for now, thanks for watching.